Thank you, and I'll accept your applause on behalf of our driver, Sam Schmidt, who you just saw in our commercial. Uh, Sam is one of the most extraordinary people I've ever met. Um, he was an IndyCar driver uh, until he was paralyzed in a racing crash in the year 2000. So for 15 years, he has not been able to move from his shoulders down and certainly never expected to be able to drive again. And now, in the space of a little over a year, Sam Schmidt, with the help of Arrow, uh, has become what I consider to be the astronaut for the disabled community in the United States and around the world. Uh, and, and we'll talk th this afternoon about our story with Sam. He did have an impressive racing career. Uh, it was cut short. And, and sometimes these things are so sad that he won his first race in his hometown of Las Vegas and he was paralyzed the very next week. Um, he's also one of the most engaging and smartest people I've ever met. Certainly, um, now that I know Sam, I can never have a bad day again in my life, right? Uh, but he, he puts us all to shame because not only is he still, as I'll be able to demonstrate, still one of the best drivers in the world even though he really can't move, uh, but he owns his own race team now and he owns several businesses. He started a nonprofit for the advancement of disability research called Conquer Paralysis Now. Uh, and then, just two years ago, uh, we became partners. And here's the story about how that happened, because it's not my job to sum up the entire summit for you, but we have talked about several themes over the past couple of days, and to make this meaningful for you, I want to make sure that I touch on them a little bit while we tell the story of our car. Um, we talked about, we've been talking about the, in innovation you have to fill, fulfill a need, uh, and that our definition of innovation at Arrow is that you're creating something of value to others. Uh, and we don't really put an electronic tag on that. That's why we support very heavily uh, innovation in the arts and education as well, not just in creating new, uh, new inventions. Our tagline at Arrow, our slogan for our brand, is five years out. And that is a specific measurement of time for us and for the electronics industry because you can get a new phone every six months that'll be better and better. Um, and five years is the practical horizon for electronics. Five years ago, you probably didn't have a tablet, and five years from now, you'll probably have something else. And we already know what that is, and I'm not going to tell you what it is right now. Uh, but it's cool, believe me, it's cool. And five years is that practical horizon beyond that, we really don't know. Beyond that, you know, it's a time machine or something like that that we really can't build. And so five years out is the slogan. And traditionally, over the past 80 years, Arrow has been one of those giant companies that you don't know. We don't sell to consumers. We sell to other businesses. We're business to business, B to B. And we sell electronic components and we distribute them around the world in enormous volumes. We have warehouses with billions of components, and we move two million components a minute 24-7 uh, around the world. 18,000 employees are doing this and other jobs. But the components business, uh, you always have to sell more components just to make the same amount of money. So innovation is the key for us. Becoming a solutions company is where our success in the future lies. And so, when I was hired as the first corporate social responsibility director in the history of Arrow, my mission was to find humanitarian technology projects that would help people fulfill a need in society and also position Arrow in a new way so that you would think about us in the business world, the electronics world, would think about us not just as the grocery store of electronic components, but a solutions provider, someone that could help innovators 
realize their dreams in a meaningful, practical way within five years or less. And so, whoop, sorry. Uh, here we are. So that's how we got to the SAM car. Now, when we're talking about fulfilling a need and you're working for a Fortune 130 corporation with 460 offices around the world, you usually think that we know what we're doing, right? And that everything is very planned out. And I'm here to tell you that in this case, that absolutely wasn't true. I wasn't hired to build a car that a guy could drive with his head. No one had ever thought of that before. And so our CEO came to me and said, now that we've hired you, uh, what are you going to do? And I started talking about the usual things, and he said, no, that's not it. He is a car collector, and he really loves fast cars. He loves to go fast. And he said, I want you to do a fast car project that will demonstrate where we're going in the future. And I don't know what it is, but you'd better get it done, or you're out of here in a year. Okay? That's how it works. So uh, it got my attention. And so at an engineering conference for Arrow, an inside conference, I just sent out an alert and said, I'll buy dinner if you're interested in cars. And because I knew about disability and disability projects, we thought, with all of the advanced car work that's being done in the world now, clearly, how do we, how do we fit into this? Uh, we don't want to be the Google car. What can we be? And how can we help people with disabilities become more mobile? And I got an enormous response. Every engineer in the room either had a racing background or had worked on disability projects or both. I had a dream team right in front of me. And I, I'm actually an English major in college. So that's the other ironic thing was that an English major was put in charge of a car project. But that's innovation, right? So uh, here, is a, here is our SAM car. What distinguishes the Arrow car from the Google car is that it has a driver. And that's very important. Human performance is a strong theme in this conference and that that's one reason why we're here. We do not want to get the driver out of the car. Our motto in this project is be the driver of your life. And that's what we fulfill for Sam and that's what we hope that we can inspire others to be, both able-bodied people and disabled people. Uh, the technology that we chose to use, we wanted to be able to demonstrate Arrow's solution capabilities and get SAM driving as quickly as possible. Because Arrow, as a company, historically does not actually invent anything. We guide innovators to a better tomorrow. So we help the innovators, but we're not the innovators ourselves necessarily. We're not inventing new electronics. So it was important for us to do this with what is already available. We invented no new electronic equipment to do this project. The reason is, what's already in your pocket and in your hand right now, and I can see you've got one right there in your hand, all the, the mobile phone in your hand, your laptop, all the electronics at your disposal now have incredible power that really hasn't been tapped yet. What you're using right now has been invented for your maximum utility, what you want as a consumer, and what makes the most profit for the company that's manufacturing it. But that doesn't mean it can't do other things. And that's why we used existing electronics. So in a matter of four months in the first year, we bought the car, we bought a Corvette from Chevrolet. They didn't give us one, I asked. They wouldn't do, they wouldn't do it. So I had to go out and buy a Corvette. And then we tore it apart because they wouldn't even give us the engineering diagrams to work on the car. I remember when we bought the car and I said to the car dealer, I said, could you put it on the lift, you know, so that we could take a look at it before we bring it home? And our engineers got under it and they started pointing and said, oh, we're going to connect this here, not there. And then I got scared because I realized we didn't know a thing about this car. We just had an idea. And so for four months, we connected existing electronics to the car so that he could drive with his head. We didn't change the engine, we didn't change the transmission, we didn't change the brakes or any other major system. We added electronics in the rear deck of the car and connected them in a human-machine interface so that he could drive. 
And so, let's see if we show any more of that. Nope, not yet. Okay, we'll go back. Um, so here's how it works. The first thing he does is he needs to steer. And he can only move his head like this. So we have four infrared cameras mounted inside the car. And they're pointed at him. And each one of those cameras emits an infrared beam at him. He's wearing a hat that has eight reflective sensors on the hat. The infrared beam hits those sensors, bounces back to the cameras, and basically what the electronics are doing is measuring the angle of reflection back. And in one one hundredth of a second, it translates that to a steering instruction to the car. So the car actually turns more quickly and more precisely than you and I can drive with our hands. So when he turns his head right, the car goes right. When he turns his head left, it goes left. Now, somebody asked me, what happens if he coughs? Anybody, what happens if he coughs? Well, we had to think about that. First, we had to teach the car and Sam how to drive with their head. Then we had to teach the car what not to do. So we came up with a list of about 12 things that might happen to Sam while he's driving that we do not want the car to follow his head as a driving instruction. So coughing, sneezing, having a seizure or convulsion, which can happen, muscle spasms, which can happen. Uh, he's a race car driver, so he likes girls, pretty girls. He often starts to look, somebody says, hey, Sam, and he goes like that. We don't want that, right? We don't want that. So all these things, the, the car operates in parameters for that. Now, we, first year, you know, we, we kept it very simple, and we wanted to keep the motions just like his wheelchair so that he didn't have to learn a lot of new uh, physical movements for driving. Uh, because if he got in a difficult situation on the track, we didn't want him to revert to his more familiar muscle memory of his wheelchair. So we kept it very much the same. So that's why left and right with his head makes a lot of sense. And then the first year, we had him tilt his head back and hit a sensor in the headrest for acceleration. And it went in 10 mile an hour increments. And so he had to hit his head backwards 10 times in order to go 100 miles an hour. And then he would hold a, a pressure sensor in his mouth and bite down on that for braking. Less than five months after we received the car from Chevrolet, we were driving at the Indianapolis 500, which is the single largest one-day sporting event in the world and arguably the most famous motor race in the world. 450,000 spectators, and it's a 2.5 mile oval. We drove two warm-up laps to get up to speed, and then he drove four laps. He was treated as a qualifying driver by the race because he never retired, he only got hurt. And so they let him drive qualifying laps just like the other 32 uh, official drivers in the race. And I'm pleased to report that on that day, we know he went over 100, but the speedometer and the track clock didn't match. And so they went with the track clock and they said he went 97. But as you could see from that TV commercial on the film, it was still a great, great day. And he said afterwards, the most significant thing for us was, he said, for the first time in 15 years, I feel normal again. And, you know, we all lost it at that point. We all cried. And you know, it, was, it was a very special moment because what we learned as a technology company was very important that day. It's not about the technology. It's not about the car. It's about the person. I mean, people are impressed by what we did, but if we didn't have Sam, not only as our driver, but as our partner, as our astronaut, the car would never be as good as it is. And this story would not be as resonant with the world as it has become. So Sam 2.0 in 2015, he's still steering left and right with his head, uh, but, and now we have gone to sip and puff technology so that he blows into a tube with a pressure sensor. The harder he blows, the faster the car goes. Now Sam is very happy about this. <coughs> Sorry. 
because when he was uh, when he was driving in year one and he was tilting his head back, um, he couldn't go fast enough. You know, he's a race car driver. He wants to stomp it. He wants to floor the accelerator, and he couldn't do that. It was too gradual. We had never heard the engine of this fantastic car really growl. And so in year two, the first thing he did in a parking lot in Denver, Colorado, was blow into the tube as fast, as hard as he could, and the car just took off. And, you know, we could hear him laughing. Uh, and so he did come back. He did come back. Uh, braking, he sips the air back through the tube like a straw. Now we have graduated with this technology, and again, it's all off the shelf, so it only took us a few months to make these, uh, to make these changes. We're driving road courses, so much more complicated, left, right, up, and down. In year one, after Indy, he gradually went faster, and he ended up going 107 miles an hour. That was the fastest he did in year one. Well, now he's doing 180-degree hairpin turns on courses, and he's still going 105 miles an hour top speed. So his leap forward with just a little more technology, with a little more innovation, was extraordinary. This is actually an outdated slide. Um, our impact to date around the world, we have generated 1.4 billion, with a B, billion media impressions. Quite frankly, uh, I know that our friends in the football teams in Liverpool and other cities that you've heard from, they know what impressions are, they know what to do with 1.4 billion impressions. Arrow really doesn't. And so this is what I say to Arrow inside about 1.4 billion impressions. When Microsoft introduced Windows 8 software, it spent $1 billion in hopes of generating 1 billion impressions. And so we've generated 1.4 billion impressions now, and all we've done is build the car. Uh, we've also been the subject of more than 500 media stories around the world, uh, and we've been, we're going everywhere with the car now. We've been overseas. Uh, we've been outside the United States. We've been on display at the Smithsonian Institution, the National Museum of, of the United States. And so, uh, and we've won several international awards. This is a picture of Arrow from the past. This is uh, the origins of Arrow in New York City. And so where are we going? It's not, con it's not confidential anymore. Uh, we're going from old style to new style electronics innovation to computer innovation and solutions. And this is what the SAM car represents. And this is why this story has become so important to the company and why just telling an electronics story wasn't going to be enough. This is why we needed sports, because sports is a common language around the world. And combining sports and innovation and having SAM as our driver um, has, been, has made all the difference. So what are we going to be doing now this year? This is just a little bit about Arrow and the size, but I've told you about that before. Um, we have added an IoT platform to the car uh, so that we can collect data about Sam as well as the safety co-driver who drives with him. Uh, and we're dashboarding that in real time during our drives as well as sending, sending that out to our followers. I'm just going to click through this. Uh, this is called Arrow IT Connect, and so now the car has become a smart platform as well as a semi-autonomous vehicle. And this year, just to wrap up, what we're doing is we're going back to the Indy 500 with all this new technology. We've bought a new Corvette that goes even faster. We expect that Sam might hit as fast as 150 miles an hour. And finally, uh, and I'll wrap it up here, uh, we are driving the 100th anniversary of the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb in, in Colorado. And that's a race that starts at the bottom of Pikes Peak Mountain and goes to the top. It's 12 miles, 160 turns, no fences, no guardrails, and the drop-off is hundreds of meters. We're going as a demonstration in the race. Sam will be driving using only his head. The other racers in the race, of course, will be using their hands and feet. And now we are developing new technology for the race uh, to help the other drivers as well, both with their IoT platforms as well as rescue beacons uh, that are, that are uh, 
that are connected so that if they have an accident, uh, they can be located uh, because it's a very dangerous race. And so with that, um, I'll wrap it up and I look forward to your questions later. Thank you.